2016 Village of Peoria Heights Board of Trustees meeting. Meeting is now called to order. Would you please rise and join us in the Pledge of the Flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our village clerk is on vacation tonight, so we need a motion from the board to temporarily appoint Administrator Fick to handle the clerk duties tonight. So moved. I have a motion from Trustee Cumming. Second. Second from Trustee Mariscal. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Thank you, the ayes have it. Mr. Administrator, you're the fortunate son of being able to be named our village clerk tonight. Would you please call roll? Trustee Harn. Present. Trustee Carter. Present. Trustee Mariscal. Present. Uh, Trustee Cumming. Present. Trustee Reichert. Trustee Fuller. Okay, thank you very much. First order of business tonight is the approval of the Board of Trustees minutes for June 21st, 2016. Are there any changes that need to be made to the minutes? I move that we accept the minutes as submitted. I have a motion from Trustee Cumming. Second from Trustee Carter. All those in favor of approving the Board of Trustees minutes for June 21st, 2016, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Thank you, the ayes have it. And the Board has approved the Board of Trustees minutes for June 21st, 2016. Next order of business tonight is the approval of the Executive Session minutes for June 21st, 2016. We need a motion for approval, please. So moved. Have a motion from Trustee Cumming. Second. Second from Trustee Mariscal. All those in favor of approving the executive session minutes for June 21st, 2016, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. Thank you. The ayes have it. The board has approved the executive session minutes for June 21st, 2016. Our next order of business tonight is the approval of the Board of Trustees minutes for July 5th, 2016. Are there any changes that need to be made to the minutes as submitted? Any motion for approval? Make a motion. Motion from Trustee Carter. Second. Second from Trustee Mariscal. All those in favor of approving the Board of Trustees minutes for July 5th, 2016, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Thank you. The Board has approved the Board of Trustees minutes for July 5th, 2016, as submitted. Next order of business tonight is uh, correspondence. Mr. Administrator, anything? that we need to know on the correspondence front. There is no correspondence this evening, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. I'm not aware of any announcements, so we will go directly to trustee reports, and first will be public works with Trustee Harn. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. I have nothing. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move to administration personnel with Trustee Cumming. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Just like to announce that the tower is now open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. There are family, senior, and uh, junior memberships available. So if you have any questions, please come on up and, and talk to the people at the ticket office at, uh, at the tower. They'd be more than happy to help you out. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Trustee Cumming. We'll move now to economic development, village improvements with Trustee Carter. Thank you. I have nothing at this time. All right. Thank you. Trustee Fuller could not be here tonight. Uh, Chief, anything regarding the police department? Uh, the only announcement we have is the next neighborhood watch meeting will be July 25th, 6.30 here at the Village Hall. All right. Thank you, Chief. We'll go to uh, Village Hall building maintenance with Trustee Mariscal. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I have nothing to report this evening. All right, thank you. And regarding the fire department, Trustee Riker could not be here tonight. Mr. Administrator, any news that you know of on the fire department front? Uh, nothing that I know of, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Comments from the audience? Yeah, we will. Yeah. No uh, cares, concerns, recipes, or anything of any <laughs> glaring wonderment. All right, we thank everyone for attending, but we also do have Mr. Nick Navis here and uh, regarding the corridor study, and I believe that we have, Nick's going to give us a few words of wisdom regarding what he was involved in and what the results would be. Yeah, if you would please, stand to the microphone with Nick. Is that good? Yep. All right, thanks. Uh, so what I wanted to do tonight is uh, just go through some of the work that we've done so far for the commercial corridors master plan. I want to say up front, this is a draft plan. Uh, we're still working with the village staff to 
um, you know, receive their comments. We're going to try to receive, we, we received some ton uh, comments tonight for our, our open house that we just did for an hour. Um, and then whatever we hear from you, you know, we'll run with that moving forward, incorporate those revisions or those changes or those comments into the next draft. So uh, before I start, uh, my name's Nick Davis. I'm a principal associate at Hazio Levine uh, Associates. And then with me is Jamie Jackson. Uh, she's an associate at uh, Hazel Levine as well. And then we also had on our team as a sub-consultant, Terra Engineering. Um, they're very familiar with the region. They've done a lot of work in the area. Um, and they helped us with some of the components, the transportation-related components uh, that we'll, we'll talk about as we kind of go through. So what I want to do is we'll move, we'll move through this pretty quick. It's a long document. When I hit the high level, um, key issues, key, key recommendations. Uh, if there's any questions, we can always come back and uh, talk about them afterwards. So. Uh, with that, you know, opening up the the first uh, the first chapter of the plan is really introduction and purpose. It talks about you know uh, the corridors as a whole. So we're talking about Glen Avenue, Prospect Avenue, or Prospect Road, and uh, War Memorial Drive. And although they're three separate corridors, it's really all the commercial entities that make up uh, the village of Peoria Heights. And that's that's a big part of what this study was trying to address: is how do we unite some of their uh, characteristics? How do we divide them out? What are some of the key issues? What are some of the the opportunities that happen? Um, you know, in each one of these corridors. So as we kind of go through this, it's, it's all one commercial master plan, not three separate corridors. Uh, we talk about the planning process, the history of Peoria Heights. Uh, we identify that regional setting, the study area description. Uh, we give a brief description of what the role of each one of these commercial corridors are. Um, and then as we move into, we start talking about the profile of the commercial corridors. Sorry, that's really difficult to read, I would imagine. So uh, I know after, after this, there's a sign-up sheet up front if you want a copy of the plan. Um, you know, the village will be able to run you a, a hard copy so you can take home and read it and provide us any comments. Um, but what we did is this summarizes the community outreach that we had done. Uh, we did have an outreach activity at the beginning of the process. It was sort of a visioning session as we kicked off the project. Um, you know, we had maps on the table. It was in this room. Um, we were just trying to get as many ideas as we could. Like, what were the issues? What are the problems? Um, you know, what would people like to see change over the next 5, 10, 15 years? And all of that got compiled into, um, you know, a, a base foundation or an outline that we used to, to really inform the entire planning process. So these are the things that we know we need to address as we move through, then other things that we have from our planning experience or what we've done in other communities, and bringing that all together in this kind of cohesive plan. Uh, again, nearly impossible to read. So some of the main things that we were talking about is like need for, um, you know, parking improvements or, uh, you know, there needs to be a, a more unified streetscape or, or those kinds of visual improvements. Um, things like increasing pedestrian and bicycle mobility in the downtown. So these are things that we were hearing about, um, you know, as we were going through all these different community outreach sessions. Uh, other concerns, um, you know, as I'd mentioned, there's, there's potentials for development or redevelopment. So we provide a couple of uh, locations where, you know, we say there's definitely some development opportunities here. We even identify some catalyst sites and provide a little bit more detail on what those could look like moving forward. Uh, we reviewed some of the past plans and studies that were relevant to these commercial corridors. Um, and those help to inform really our, our kind of base knowledge of the community. Uh, we did an assessment of the land use and development as it exists now, so that would update uh, or could be updated in our land use plan that we recommend later on in the document. Um, and it just breaks it down into the, the base categories, so residential, uh, commercial, office and industrial, public and semi-public, parks and trails, and then some of the other categories, uh, be it like parking fields or undeveloped areas or, uh, or vacant lots. And then that's the map that identifies them parcel by parcel uh, at, the, at the lot level, the building level. And then we also did an audit of the current zoning uh, signage and development controls. There's definitely a lot of room within the, the zoning ordinance as it stands now to make some improvements. So as part of this plan, uh, the recommendations that we provide here, once we're all sort of on the same page, we know we're moving in the right direction, uh, we receive the feedback that we're looking for, we can provide a couple of recommendations about where we know changes may need to occur to the zoning amend or zoning code. So those amendments could be made after this plan, something that you can move forward with. That's something you could do you know, day two after you adopt the plan. Um, we also did an assessment of the existing transportation and mobility, uh, looked at things like um, you know, the regional comparisons, the public transportation, uh, the existing street system, uh, just enough so we had a, a, an understanding of how people are moving through both vehicle, pedestrians, and cyclists are moving through um, you know, these commercial corridors. What are some of the challenges? What are, you know, what, what's different that's happening on War Memorial versus Prospect Road um, versus Glen Avenue? And then the recommendations would help to uh, you know, as they could address some of those issues. 
We also did a market assessment looking at some of the influences and opportunities in the region. Uh, this gets a little deep, but if you dive into it, it talks about some of the population and employment um, uh, opportunities that exist. We talk about some of the housing and commercial. Uh, some of the things that we heard a lot through, you know, throughout this process so far is the need for a mix of housing types, um, in, in, in not just in the downtown, but you know, in all the commercial corridor areas, and as they start to transition into those residential neighborhoods. So what kind of housing uh, options or, or, or types do people want to see? What kind of products? Is it uh, mixed use development with residential on top? Uh, are we looking at multifamily? Is it maybe single family attached? We provide a couple of examples of what that could look like, some communities where they've done it really well. Um, and you can see how it would fit in uh, certain areas of uh, each one of these commercial corridors. Uh, and then we get in really to the bulk of the plan. And, and the remaining chapter, this chapter, chapter three, is actions and strategies. What can we do um, to you know, ultimately improve these commercial areas? So since I can't really read that, I'm gonna go to my document, make sure we're talking about the same things. So it's broken into five different sections uh, and, or subsections, and that's land use and development, access and connectivity, uh, prospect roads, cross section, uh, reconfiguration, which is essentially a road diet, and then parking and streetscape and beautification. So the first piece talks about the land use and development. And the primary thing that we wanted to do here is take what's such a large area, these three different commercial areas, and start to break them down into more manageable spaces. Um, you know, what makes them similar? Is it uses, lot depths? Um, you know, configurations, how people are moving through the sites, so vehicular access, um, what are some of the challenges, and then knowing moving forward, what are some of the recommendations that are going to change these areas. Um, so the, the categories that these were broken down to are, I don't know if this works. Uh, so up on the top you have that light green is that Glen Avenue commercial area. Um, there's also, so the darker is the downtown area. Sorry, my hand's real shaky. Uh, downtown periphery is what's around that light blue. And then the purple is local office and distribution. And this is what we want to see this area develop into over time. Uh, there's also Prospect Road South, which is this green. Uh, so that's directly adjacent to on the west side of uh, Prospect Road, but south of the downtown area, south of that transition area. And then War Memorial Drive is the red, which is primarily the commercial, um, like bigger, bigger box or, or larger footprint buildings. Uh, and they're, they're typically aligned on War Memorial. They're more auto-oriented. Uh, and then you have the yellow, which is this transitional residential zone. Uh, so it's that adjacent residential district. And it's a mix of, of home types. So um, there's a size difference, uh, a character difference. So we talk about what some of those improvements and, and, and really what some of those um, future uses need to do that are within these districts to you know, not negatively impact those areas. You know, if it's buffers, uh, setbacks, um, maybe landscaping, or uh, some general type of screening, that's all talked about in, in this section. So, sort of talk through this. Uh, one of the things that we did provide are, and, and maybe it's easier to see up on the posters, so if you have any questions, we can talk about it to the posters later, are there's several redevelopment opportunities. And we often say, really, any parcel is a redevelopment opportunity. You could redevelop something tomorrow if you wanted to. But there are opportunities within uh, the village where there's these key sites, be it a vacant lot or you know, maybe something that's just so underutilized, not capitalizing on you know, some of the growth trends or the use trends that are happening and what people want to see. So we provided two examples. Um, there's an office infill redevelopment which occurs, so what would be directly west of um, you know, the downtown, as you know, like we're Sieberling. So this is uh, Sieberling. This is, or I'm sorry, this is Sieberling. Um, this is Duryea. Uh, you have Atlantic. So the orientation is, is odd. We're actually looking kind of to the south, southwest this way. And then the trail is in the back, that Rock Island Greenway Trail. And this shows a mix of kind of that office infill, um, this parking lot. So this is the office infill. It's uh, three to four stories depending on the heights uh, and how it would be set back. But it would also allow for some parking for both the office use, um, but also a shared parking that could be used with, uh, with the village. So it could be an option for overflow parking from the downtown, providing direct access to some of the uses that are currently uh, along Prospect Road that, as we heard throughout the process, there's just not enough access to you know, um, adequate parking for uses throughout the day. It doesn't really matter what time it is. People are looking for more parking. Um, and sure, it's always nice when you get that one spot that's right in front of the use that you want to go to, but that's not always practical, especially in a downtown that's this vibrant or people really want to be spending a lot of time in. Um, so you need to start thinking of what are some of the opportunities that are out there? How can we use some of these uh, uh, other vacant lands or undeveloped lands directly adjacent to the downtown? So that's what this option shows is that 
that kind of overflow, overflow parking. We also show there's an opportunity to capitalize on that Greenway Trail. There's a trailhead recommended uh, at the end of Durier, right where it would tap into the Greenway. And so what would be nice is you could, you could really create a loop based on this concept and what we recommend in some of these uh, road diet concepts that are up here on these boards. Um, where you create that loop, someone could get off at Prospect, uh, you know, go to the downtown, um, grab a drink, grab an ice cream, uh, grab lunch, whatever that might be, and then hop right back on and just, instead of going back down Prospect Road, they could go down Duryea, there might be a trailhead with some information, a nice gateway feature, something that would set it apart, maybe from other communities that you're going to be cutting through. Uh, another option is this uh, mixed-use block development. So currently where the Save-A-Lot is, some residential developments, um, an underutilized parking lot that's to um, the north side. So just to kind of orient people, uh, this is Marietta, this is Monita, uh, Atlantic is over here on the far west side, and then Prospect Road. What we're trying to show here is a mix of product types. So you'd have mixed use building, three to four stories. Um, again, it would just depend on what the, the market viabilities might be. But the, the concept there is commercial and potentially office, but ideally commercial on the ground floor. Some kind of service use, retail use, restaurants, um, you know, bars, uh, services, and then residential above. And you know, that, that's another thing that we've heard from people is they, they just want more options to live closer to the downtown. Um, you know, so that'd be one option is that mixed use development here. And then as we move further west, so away from the corridor, up on the north side along Marietta, um, we showed two multifamily buildings, two to three stories, um, you know, larger units, uh, you'd have parking in the rear. And then on the south side along Monita, uh, we show single family attached, so townhomes, um, you know, where You'd have your own parking, uh, your, your own garage, separated use, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it just shows that this is kind of that toolkit. So what you could see here, there's several areas throughout this corridor uh, along Prospect Road, but even along Glen Avenue and some areas along War, uh, War Memorial, where you could see these kind of um, uh, residential options fitting in. So maybe multifamily makes more sense where you have larger um, uh, access points, so off of War Memorial. Uh, maybe single family attached works a little bit better. Uh, along Glen Avenue as you know, development interest starts to increase and people want to move closer to the downtown. Um, so these are just some options. Uh, you know, these could develop any other way, but this, this is, or this, they can develop any way, but this just kind of shows that mix of use, that program that we're shooting for. Shows how parking lots can be sited, where access points need to be, some crosswalk enhancements so pedestrians feel that they're um, a little bit safer in the, in the downtown area. Um, and then we talk about uh, access and connectivity. One of the things that uh, we do recommend here are you know, intersection improvements. So whatever you can do to kind of enhance both the vehicular safety, but also the pedestrians being uh, you know, more alerted. So people are more aware that there are pedestrians in this area. Uh, so we talk about that along War Memorial, but we also talk about some of the improvements that could be made you know, separate from the road diet. Uh, along Prospect Road, but maybe um, incorporating some intersection changes, so adding some uh, stop signs, which would be potentially at Marietta, Kelly, which would be a converting of the light, uh, and Cyberling and Durier. And the idea would be to, those would be the stop signs that would be placed there. You start to slow down traffic. I mean, almost every time that we were here, we saw a lot of cars moving pretty quick through that area. It's, it's like a drop off and you can speed. Um, it doesn't feel like a safe pedestrian environment. You know, we watched people try to cross the, the Marietta uh, bike trail, not a safe environment. So some improvements need to be made to make that more comfortable, to make that um, an area where people feel like they can be, you know, first of all, that they belong. That's, that's part of the issue is in some areas you don't feel as a pedestrian you should even be here or as a cyclist this isn't where you should be. Um, but also it would slow down some traffic, get more visibility for businesses, um, parking could be opened up a little bit, and then with access to the parking lots that we're recommending uh, in some other areas as part of the plan, you, you start to get um, more of that destination or you capitalize on that destination that people are coming to Peoria Heights for a reason. Um, so let's provide safe access to parking, safe pedestrian realms, um, and those kind of treatments. So that's a big part of what this section is addressing. Uh, we look at cross access, uh, whatever you can do to minimize like a single drive that goes to a single parking lot. How can you unify several parking lots and maybe uh, eliminate two curb cuts? Um, how do you uh, improve some of the crosswalk enhancements or, or apply ADA improvements uh, throughout the corridor? There's some areas where the, the additions have been made or the improvements have been made. There's others that have not. Um, one thing to keep in mind is to apply for several federal grants, you, you need to be ADA compliant. Uh, it's something that they look for in their streetscapes, uh, certainly. So it's just it's something that should be on the forefront. Plus, it just provides a safe environment for everybody. Um, 
we show some of the signalization changes, uh, what those recommendations look like, how you could move forward on converting uh, what are currently, you know, maybe no stop signs or taking a signal and making it into a stop sign. If it's short term, long term, what those options might be. Uh, sidewalk extensions, uh, there's several instances where both the sidewalks either not compliant with like a five foot sidewalk, it might be three foot or four foot. Um, you know, you, you want to enhance that at least or improve that and get it up to at least five foot. Um, that's the traditional or typical sidewalk width. And then making extensions where it's needed. There's several areas where there's, uh, you know, no sidewalk connection to the residential neighborhood or a sidewalk doesn't connect to the primary road. Sorry, I'm going to catch up here. Um, so this piece talks about, there was a potential cul-de-sac, which I don't think shows up, um, it's on one of the other graphics, where some of the residential districts that are tying into, or residential neighborhoods that are tying into War Memorial, there's a potential because of all the uh, cut-throughs, potential to cul-de-sac some of those roads. Uh, and the reason that you would want to do that is for a couple things. One, you could increase the commercial viability of some of those blocks. Right now they'll be broken up by essentially what's an alley or uh, uh, maybe roads that are being used to cut through. You could increase that block parcel uh, assembly uh, option and, and just make that a more uh, attractive space for a bigger development to come in. Um, you know, they could provide parking in the back. They don't have to worry about, you know, uh, just this small little lot that they're not even gonna be able to park. So it just, it opens up some options for, um, you know, War Memorial. Uh, Rock Island Greenway Trail, uh, Trailhead, we talk about one, both uh, right there where the trailhead is now just expanding upon what's there, um, you know, bolstering it up, you know, promoting it a little bit more, and then also what could happen along Duryea, uh, where it could potentially be that kind of loop that comes around um, the proposed uh, development that we showed earlier. And then just making trail connections. So as businesses are coming up along the trail, be it uh, offices or commercial or restaurants or services, um, you know, provide opportunities for people to tie into the trail, uh, maximizing that that um, that visibility, you know, stop off, grab a coffee, stop off, grab a, a donut, uh, stop off, grab a beer, whatever it might be. Um, and then just making some bike improvements throughout uh, the, the commercial areas. So there's several different types of classes. There's the, the traditional kind of bike route where it's that Shero, um, you know, you share it with the road. Uh, then there's the, or probably more traditional, the bike lane that you'll see. It's a dedicated bike lane, so that's a class two. And then the last one is class one, the trail that you actually have that's cutting through right now. Just talking about what some of those um, improvements could be in the future. Uh, the road diet cross-section, probably some of the more talked about uh, pieces as people were walking through earlier today. Um, there's a couple different options that we show. We sort of set up, you know, why we're doing this. We're talking about traffic volume. Uh, uh, traffic control, lane reduction, uh, what some of the bike facilities and pedestrian facility improvements could be based on doing a road diet. Uh, and then we provided uh, three options and then within those three options for A and B we provided two um, additional ones just because uh, there's, there's certain variations or slight variations that you can make that would make these substantially different. So option one shows uh, a, basically what would be an expanded pedestrian realm, so a wider sidewalk, a bike lane, uh, parking, and then instead of the traditional, or instead of the current four lanes, two, two north, two south, uh, you'll have a one travel lane south, um, uh, basically a turning lane in the middle, and then, oops, sorry, and then a, a northbound lane with parking and si or a bike and then sidewalk. So it's separated uses. You still have the two travel lanes moving uh, north and south. You have that turn lane in the middle that would basically be divided by blocks. So as you move further north, it'd be a turn lane left for north. If you move south, it'd be a turn lane left for south. Um, and you have parking, uh, bike lane, pedestrian realm. So that's option one. Uh, option, two, uh, option two is just an increased sidewalk width uh, and removing the left-hand turn lane. So one of the reasons why we show that option is there's really not a lot of instances where you need to make a left-hand turn, uh, a dedicated left-hand turn throughout the entire length of a block. Um, currently, there's not a lot of cross or there's not a lot of access points into driveways that are there. So not a lot of people are making that left-hand turn movement, and you could still accommodate a left-hand turn, you know, once you get to the intersections. Uh, but this way, you just have a, an even larger sidewalk. You could do different kind of planting materials, different paving materials. Um, you, you allow for more outdoor seating. Uh, there'd be a lot more options in terms of pedestrian amenities and bike amenities with option A2. Um, so option B shows uh, angle parking. So it's a, a contra bike lane on the most 
um, left side, so it's, a, it's already an improvement in an expanded bike lane uh, or an expanded sidewalk than a bike lane that travels both north and south on one side of the road. And the reason we do that is because on the other side of the road, uh, we're adding uh, angled parking. So with angled parking, you certainly do get more parking um, along the road, but there's a trade-off. You can't have a bike lane on both sides of the road. Uh, no, no bicyclist would, in their right mind, want to ride and, and kind of go into a backed up uh, a car coming out of an angled spot. We show that in the concept before. It's something that we were talking about as we were vetting it with uh, the DOT. It's not something that they would entertain. So that concept's gonna need to come out. Um, so really you only have an option B1 in this scenario. The contra bike lanes um, are used throughout the region. Uh, I wouldn't say predominantly, it's not a go-to. It can be confusing for people um, that aren't familiar with it, but it is an option and it does allow for still three travel lanes, uh, one being south, the, the turn lane, and then one being north. Um, the last option, option C, is a fairly more typical, I'd say, solution uh, when you talk about road diets. You, you have your sidewalk, expanded sidewalk, um, the parking that's right up against the curb, a protected bike lane, and then the travel lanes with the left turn lane. Uh, and this one could even be shown with an expanded sidewalk and no turn lane. Um, but I think in some instances that makes sense at the intersection, so we kept it as it is. So those are the three options for road diets. Um, we're trying to get as much feedback from the group tonight, uh, seeing what people are thinking, you know, which ones they think make sense for Peoria Heights, which ones um, maybe need a little bit more noodling before we, we move forward. So we can come back to that one. Uh, and then one of the other major components that we talked about was parking. So we have on-street parking, which is something that we just kind of walked through for um, uh, Prospect Road. Obviously along War Memorial, that's not an issue because there isn't any. And then along Glen Avenue, it, it kind of varies there. Um, but what we wanted to start to do is recommend on Prospect Road in the downtown area that there could be things like parking limits. So how do you start getting turnover rates for some of the spaces? Because people will say, you know, someone parked their car there at 8 and didn't move it till 6. Um, you know, I'm not able to get my my spot or I'm not able to get to this use. So you could start doing park it, uh, parking limits. Um, you could even transition if you wanted to into meter parking. Those are options you could look at. Um, but there's a lot of levels of severity on what you could do um, to start seeing those turnover rates. You could also do long-term solutions being uh, like a parking improvement district. So we set some of the guidelines or some of the recommendations of what that might look like. And then we recommend uh, shared parking. And one of the lots that we had shown as part of that one concept um, that's up along uh, uh, Duryea, you could see where a new use comes in, they're gonna build a parking lot that's primarily for um, their businesses they're coming in, but on you know peak hours, once maybe those businesses aren't there anymore, that parking lot could be used for you know nightlife activities or restaurant activities at night. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to start to uh, optimize spaces to you know be flexible with parking. Maybe during the, the day it's for this, and during the night it's for this. Um, public parking lots are something that many people have mentioned. Um, as of now, there's not